the three Cosmere secret projects from the year of Sanderson Kickstarter all take place in the far future. But how exactly do we get there? Time travel. Hey internet, I'm Steve the Cosmere Knot, and welcome to Raffo. I was originally able to figure out a pretty solid timeline just based on how everything lined up with the five scholars. You can see that video here. Since then, we've gotten a lot more information about the future of the Cosmere, and actually more hints to its past. Let's get a timeline. This video should be fairly safe if you haven't read everything. I'll refer to important events by the book, so if you know, you know, and if you don't, Raffo. Way back in the way back when, there was God. Probably. In the Cosmere, they were called Ada Nalsium, and they used the four primal commands, known as Dawn Shards, to create all the things. At least Roshar, but also probably a bunch of other stuff before that. Life was cool for at least like a thousand years, and then 16 people plus Hoyd decided to shake things up and kill God. Not the only time something like that happens. I'd have two nickels. That event is known as the Shattering of Adenalsium, and we're going to use that as kind of a year zero. It'll probably get covered in Brandon's eventual reworking of Dragonsteel, which is Hoyd's origin story. Boom. Shattering. The 16 folk that snagged bits of old Edo said, See you never, except JK, and spread around their little galaxy, most apparently transplanting humans to existing planets, but a couple making both humans and planets out of whole cloth. The city of Elantris likely was built during this time, fairly soon after Devotion and Dominion got there, but then was abandoned, probably by the Iri, for some reason. Odium, the shard of divine hatred, decided to follow through with that and went to take out some of his competitors. He initially couldn't find ambition, so he one-two punched Devotion and Dominion on Cell and stuffed their dispersed power into the Cognitive Realm, eventually catching up to ambition near Threnody and messing things up there. Also, Mercy is scary. Honor and Cultivation shack up together on Roshar, and Odium joins the party and gets locked down with the Oath Pact. Then he has a tizzy and starts the Cycle of Desolations. Those roll on for about 3,000 years until the prelude to the Stormlight Archive in Way of Kings happens. A Harietium, or The Last Desolation, our earliest bit of footage from the Cosmere, technically in black and white because it's just words. Likely about the same time, the city of Elantris was rediscovered by the people of Aralon. They moved in, and a few years later, people started to turn into Elantrians. Shield! Humanity trucked along on Roshar for about 2,500 years after the Stormlight Prelude, until the Recreants. At the latter end there, the events of White Sand probably occur. That's the earliest actual book in the Cosmere, and Chris has to get out pretty quick. Gotta found Silverlight sometime. Soon after that, the Riod happens on Cell. Then, ten years later, the story of Elantris happens. Fairly soon after that, Emperor's Soul probably happens too. At this point, we start to really get some concrete dates nailed down. About 9,000 to 9,500 years after the Shattering, the Lord Ruler ascends and begins his reign on Scadriel. That's exactly 1,022 years before the beginning of Mistborn. But we've got other worlds that we know about. Two to three hundred years after the Lord Ruler starts ruling, on Nalthus, Vo, the first returned, returns. Two hundred years after Vo, Awakening is discovered on Nalthus. The five scholars go a-hopping, and a hundred years after that, the Many War happens. And things happen in the Many War. Happy birthday to Nightblood! Within the next century, the Hierocracy ends on Roshar, with the War of Loss led by the Sunmaker. Between the Many War and the events of Warbreaker, we have the entirety of Mistborn Era 1. Not difficult, there's 300 years there, and all of Era 1 happens in, like, four. Pretty soon after Mistborn and everything happening with Scadriel, we need to have Warbreaker, as that has to go down several hundred years before Stormlight, and Mistborn Era 2, 341 years after the end of Era 1, takes place between the two five-book arcs of Stormlight. Likely also between Mistborn and Stormlight, the evil invades the homeland on Threnody, and then a hundred years later there are shadows for silence in the forests of hell. 4,500 years after the last desolation on Roshar, but before Labor Day, Zeth's son Sun Volano, Truthless of Shinovar, wore white. The first arc of Stormlight finishes up within about eight years, then takes a break for 10 to 15. I'm worried about that break, you guys. Again, with the Wax and Wayne series happening in that time. At this point, the roads between worlds are starting to get wide. 
Then will come the second five-book arc of Stormlight, probably spanning its own rough decade. Technology level-wise, we can assume Mistborn Era 3 would be 100 to 200 years after Era 2. It was initially pitched as a Cold War era type story. No idea how long it'll take Scadriel to hit faster than light technology. I don't think very long. But another 100 to 200 years is a good bet for Mistborn Era 4. Before that though, but not too long, Six of the Dusk needs to happen. I get the feeling Tress happens earlier in the far future of the Cosmere, probably soon after Six of the Dusk, with Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, and probably Secret Project 4 well into the Space Age. And that's the Cosmere! Big thank you to the 17th Shard and all their work on the Copper Mind. It's an absolutely invaluable resource, one that Brandon himself uses. Specifically, thank you to Could Be Fire on the forums and Beskar Comic's incredible timeline spreadsheet. I disagree with you on a few points, but solid. Also, thank you to my patrons, without whom I wouldn't be able to dedicate the amount of time I do toward making these videos. Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, y'all are the best. If this video was helpful to you, or any of my videos really, please support me on Patreon. If you join before Dragonsteel Con this year, you'll be entitled not just to my eternal gratitude, but also exclusive merchandise. Act fast though, because after the con, I'm planning on changing how swag is gonna work. Sign up now! If you aren't able to join my Patreon, Thank you for being here. I just hit 10,000 subscribers, which is a really cool milestone. Congratulations to Arkamis13, who won the Metal Vials giveaway in my celebratory stream. If you'd like a set of Metal Vials yourself, I'll have some at my booth at Dragonsteel, as well as a bunch of other merchandise that I'm really proud of. At this point, once Brandon's done with Knights of Wind and Truth, still not sold on that title, his next goal is to finish the Elantra sequels. Those will probably take place soon after the first book, but at this point, who knows. He typically writes chronologically, with some notable exceptions, so Elantris 2 and 3 may be concurrent with Wax and Wayne, I don't know. And there's always the possibility that Brandon will get bored one weekend and accidentally write a new series. Plus whatever Dan is working on. He did tentatively promise an actual canon timeline before the second half of Stormlight comes out, so we'll see how accurate our communal detectiving turned out to be. Until then, we'll just have to read and find out. <laughs> Here's me saying stuff and things in an excited way. The end.